Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Stacey Agem, and I'm the marketing manager here at Siegel Scientific. Uh, today's webinar, updating your commander integration and what's new in Bartender 2019's integra integration platform is hosted by our senior product marketing manager, Michael Leo, and our solutions consultant, Manny Castro. Um, some housekeeping rules for you all. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and all participants are on mute. And um, afterwards, we'll have a Q&A session. So uh, in the GoToWebinar task pane, that's usually on the side, go ahead and hit the questions area to uh, submit a question. And then also while you're at it, go ahead and opt in for our communications to receive emails, updates, promotional, and product related. And you can go to seagullscientific.com slash about slash uh, email sign up. And yeah, um, if you uh, cannot hear us, go ahead and check that GoToWebinar task pane um, and click that audio button and just to make sure you can hear us. Again, you will be on mute. Okay, great, Stacy. Uh, thanks for uh, the introduction. Uh, what we'll be uh, covering today in our agenda is um, I'll start off with a quick recap of what's new and what's changed uh, between Bartender 10.1 and the, our latest version, Bartender 2019. Uh, next, uh, Manny will uh, take a take us a in-depth look at Bartender's in 2019's integration platform which replaces 10.1's commander functionality, plus offering a lot more functionality, as you'll see. Uh, many will then uh, cover sort of best practices and tips for preparing and performing the update from commander uh, in Bartender 10.1 to Bartender 2019. And with the time remaining, uh, we will answer as many questions as we can. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, attending and taking time this morning. So to start off, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Bartender 2019. Uh, it's available in four editions, as you see, Enterprise, Automation, Professional, and Starter. The Enterprise Edition is uh, focused on document management and centralized printing across an entire organization. Uh, automation Edition provides all the different automation options now, including uh, the ability to combine forms, actions, and all our different system integrations. Professional Edition is primarily focused on connecting label designs to external databases and selecting or inputting data at print time through a configurable data entry form. And then finally, our new Starter Edition, which we just introduced a couple months ago, is our entry-level offering for small businesses and departments for simple label creation and printing. Uh, Bartender 2019 is compatible with the latest Windows versions and releases and has a greatly simplified installation process. Uh, it involves basically a single Bartender software program and for each customer a specific product license, a unique product license key code that they use to activate the Bartender software to the appropriate or right edition level that they've purchased. And finally, uh, all the different Bartender 29 editions are also licensed by the number of printers used. Uh, next slide. So why should you update to our latest software release Bartender 2019? There are a couple of major reasons to update. Uh, the first is 10.1, as you're probably all aware of, is end of life in December 31st, 2020, the end of this year. What that really means is you will not no longer be able to get technical support for it. Um, the other thing is 10.1 is only compatible with Windows 10 version 1803. This particular version of Windows 10 was released in July of 2018, a couple years ago, and frankly could be a major security issue. Uh, even if your PC where Bart, 
where bartender 10.1 is running is not directly connected to the internet, it still could be a security risk if it is on your company network. But the second reason for updating bartender 2019 is uh, probably more exciting is uh, all the whole new bunch of whole new capabilities uh, in across a number of different areas that are available. Um, first, we have intelligent templates which allow you to produce a wide variety of flexible label and document designs without having to create and maintain hundreds of separate documents. The text editing experience is much cleaner and simplified, uh, saving you time uh, in terms of creating and modifying your bartender labels and document designs. Uh, as you'll see, we've added many new database connections, including Azure, SQL databases, XML files, MySQL, and many others. We also include the capability to create your own database if uh, you don't have access to some of these other databases, commercial databases. We allow you to more easily print multiple records within a single label or document using a table object sourced from a database. We support writing back to most SQL-based databases as well. Uh, we also, Bartender 2019 also now allows you to create PDFs without any third-party driver. And we've made designing entry forms in Bartender much easier and more intuitive, including supporting easier database record and printer selection directly in the forms themselves. Uh, there's also uh, new improved and redesigned web printing, allowing uh, access to Bartender from any uh, browser or from any smartphone, iOS or Android smartphone. And finally, there's a whole new administration console. This replaces the security center in uh, Bartender 10.1. Uh, the administration council consolidates a number of features and capabilities, including not only user security, but printer management, redire redirection and failover, license management, electronic signatures and document encryption, and it allows you to also easily manage and deploy integrations. So hopefully you've seen some exciting reasons to uh, take a look at Bartender 2019 and hopefully update or upgrade. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Manny. Uh, he'll now give you some more details on the great new integration capabilities in Bartender 2019. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Mike. So we'll begin with what's new in Bartender 2019's integration platform. Uh, this will give us a baseline for some of the new features and terminology we'll be using throughout today's presentation. Bartender 2019 features some new companion applications that replace Commander. As Mike said, these new applications are Integration Builder and the Administration Console. And you'll see that the Administration Console has actually absorbed um, quite a few different roles in Bartender 2019 and security and integration uh, management of your live integration being one of them. So you're going to use Integration Builder to build your integrations, including all configuration settings, like what folder you're going to scan, what type of file your integration is going to process. You can also leverage tons of new actions as they are now called, and not just print actions, but some other pretty powerful actions as well, which we'll cover in a moment. Integration Builder also features some new powerful testing features where you're able to test integrations without affecting production integrations. You're able to replay events for testing without needing to do things uh, like manually drop a trigger file. You're able to test integrations without actually printing. Instead, you can view a preview of the printout and we'll see an example of that uh, towards the end as well. And once your integration is tested, you can then deploy your integration. And deploying in the integration in itself has an assortment of features as well. You can set a target server. Uh, so say that you want to deploy your integration from your work laptop to the actual bartender server. That's now an option. You don't have to be on the actual server to do so. You can schedule, uh, you can schedule the integration. Uh, you can set a schedule as for when you want the integration to be deployed. So say you need to hold off on an, an integration going live until the end of the week or the end of the day or a specific day and time. You can now do that. And finally, uh, when you've configured your integration and deployed it, as mentioned, it will deploy and open in the administration console. In the administration console, you can then monitor all your integrations, and you no longer have a limited of single task list or a single integration either. You can run as many integrations as needed. So now let's talk a little bit about this redesigned integration platform, uh, as it does come with a new set of services that enable all this functionality that we talked about and some uh, additional ones, which we'll cover in a moment. 
So this new uh, architecture includes the integration service, which waits for events to occur, like, the, like a file to drop, the print scheduler service that manages the bartender print engine and guarantees print order and assigns print jobs, and finally, the bartender engines, the actual bartender executables that you're probably familiar with uh, that have the same role in this layout of actually printing the jobs. And we'll come back to that, that new service architecture in a moment as well. So how does this all work when you're coming from Commander? Uh, so a little review on kind of what we're used to and what's common in Commander. So the common integration methods in, or the common integration method in Commander uh, historically has always really been the file integration. Of course, there's other supported ones, um, but that was always kind of the, the go-to when we, uh, whenever we saw um, Commander integrations out there. The common data structures would commonly be Commander Script, uh, CSV data, or BTXML. Now, in Integration Builder, you can take that Commander task list import it all, and all the same functionality is still available. And it's really actually pretty quick and easy and uh, to import and migrate over. So moving on to Bartender 2019. So not only are the same integration methods and data structures supported, you also have access to expand from there. So you can now integrate via web service integration where you can send the integration platform a post web service request and trigger a print job to occur that way. You can build a database integration where the platform, the integration platform that is, uh, monitors a database and awaits a record to be updated or inserted or uh, whatever you design the integration, there's actually a handful of options uh, to uh, which that event triggers um, the uh, integration to occur. And those are just kind of a couple options as well. There's also this new concept of actions, as we previously mentioned. So there's around, uh, I wanna say 100 actions you can configure your integration to execute. So the common ones that you anticipate or you expect to be there are going to be like uh, your print document actions, your processing of a PTXML script uh, action, or a your processing of a commander script action. And it's actually now called print command script. Don't worry, all your same syntax is still supported. No need to change anything. Uh, just the nomenclature has changed. So in addition to this, there's um, not just those print actions, you can also write back to databases, you can send web service requests out, you can write to files, you can send emails, you can parse data before printing. And really with roughly 100 or so actions as mentioned, you can get pretty creative with your integration. Um, we even have some uh, complicated exotic integrations, if you wanna call it that, that actually don't even really print labels. Um, they just, because of the functionality of Integration Builder, we find different use cases uh, for the tool. So not just printing your labels. So now going back to this new uh, service architecture in Bartender 2019, uh, let's go ahead and look at it in an end-to-end -end workflow fashion, so to speak, and uh, review how it works from left to right. So the first thing that happens, as always, an event occurs. So an ERP, a custom application, a device out there somewhere, either drops a trigger file, sends a web service request in, uh, writes to a database, sends uh, data in via a network socket, whatever that event is, right? So the integration service then detects this event that has just occurred. If there are any non-print actions, such as processing of data, like that search and replace and things like that that we talked about, sending a web service request, and this is regardless if it's before or after the print job, if there is a print job that's part of this integration, is handled by this new integration service. Now for any print type actions, so remember that's going to be our print command script, BTXML, and just print document actions. So for any of those types of actions, it's actually passed to the print scheduler service to assign out to the bartender engines to print. Now, the print scheduler service handles something pretty important apart from just assigning print jobs to bartender engines. It actually has an algorithm that runs that intelligently assigns print jobs to the three or more bartender engines that are running. While doing this, it ensures that print jobs uh, remain in order, in the order that they were requested, and also optimal performance. And for those of you uh, coming from Commander and familiar with the technical background of Commander and how jobs were assigned back then, uh, may recall that it was a bit of an endeavor to facilitate that guaranteed print order and uh, also still having optimal performance. 
So you would have to run, uh, in Commander that is, you would have to run a single bartender process, which would limit your throughput in order to have that, uh, that guaranteed print order. And this is actually no longer the case. The print scheduler services algorithm ensures that the multiple bartender print engines process jobs in the correct order, ensuring serialized labels, database records, etc., all print as you anticipate them to and how you requested them. So no more having to fumble around with handlers, number of processes, desktop heap, or any of that. Finally, when the print job is intelligently assigned to the bartender print engine, uh, ending the process, your label finally prints as you would anticipate. With this new architecture, you'll notice better printing performance along with all the new features and functionality uh, that we covered in this section and also uh, what Mike covered. And uh, that kind of wraps up our section on what's new in Bartender 2019's integration platform. Manny, this is great. And thank you so much for taking the time to break down everything. But, you know, one question I have is where do I begin? How do I actually start, you know, transferring over my old integrations and mm -hmm. getting them updated? Mm -hmm. Right. And it's actually, you know, it's a very common question. It's a very common concern. And it's, um, uh, you know, what we'll uh, go ahead and address now. <laughs> So yeah. assessing your commander integration. Um, so one thing to keep in mind about integrations, regardless, you know, even if you're, you know, within a given industry or within uh, even a given company, each integration is going to be a little bit different. So the first step in upgrading is to assess your particular scenario and build a list, so to speak, as far as you want to gather certain files, you want to gather certain um, things like printer names, etc. And we're going to go ahead and go through that and see uh, what those items are. So we'll begin by identifying the files that we need to back up. So we'll want to collect our, if we're coming from 2016, our BTIM files or 10.1 and prior, we want to collect our commander task lists, which have uh, the .tl file extensions. So these files contain all our configuration settings for the integration, like what folder we're scanning, what type of files we're anticipating, etc. Uh, then we need to dig into the location of our bartender documents. Uh, so this may be available or found within the trigger file for things like Commander Script and BTXML. Um, or if it's something like just a print command, um, you'll find that in your task list in Commander. And we want to make sure that we're aware of all the files, these BTW files that we're using, as remember, that's going to be particular to your use case, where you might just be using one or two via your integration, and another department, even within your own company, is using maybe several dozen. And we want to be aware of that. And then also, we want to be aware of the folders and the folder structures that these are nested in. Um, Lastly, we want to make sure that we look around for any dependencies. So we want to open these bartender labels and kind of get to know them a little bit. So are they using any external databases? Are they using any external images? And we want to click around, check our database connection, check our images and, and the properties and see if we have any of those external dependencies and also where those dependencies are located, specifically the file structure that they're nested in. And effectively we just want to make a list of this all so now we, uh, we don't want to just pay attention to the files themselves and just copy them over we want, like i said we want to pay attention to the uh, the folder structures as well and also we want to uh, think about um, these resources and where they're located and what i mean by that is uh, is this going to be are these uh, resources located in uh, network drives that are shared out from another server. Uh, the printers, are they locally installed? Are they shelled, uh, shared out from a print server as well? And we want to make sure we take into account because uh, that that resource is going to be available in our new Bartender 2019 uh, instance. And lastly, and actually kind of an important one, unless uh, you anticipate this change, uh, you want to take note of all the printers that your integration uses. So if you open up your control panel in Windows and you go to your devices and printers, you're going to see a ton of printers probably. And not every single one of those is going to be used by your integration. So you're going to want to either dig through your trigger files or ask around to um, as far as, you know, maybe uh, somebody that's uh, that commonly or frequently uses this integration, uh, what printers are you dependent upon? And we want to take note of the naming convention because uh, one thing that we'll uh, see here in a moment is 
um, we might anticipate or we have to anticipate changes as well to our ERP system or the device or uh, entity or application that we're integrating with. Uh, and then uh, now the final thing is we'll want to back up our uh, or migrate our system database. So this one is kind of a it depends kind of scenario. So it's possible that you may have an integration running and you're not logging to the bartender system database um, or you're in a scenario where you're okay to start over. Um, you know, you're just, you've backed up your system database. You're okay to just start over and start logging. Uh, however, if you do have files that are located in Librarian. So if you're using our Librarian tool, remember that Librarian is effectively the front end uh, to the storage uh, in the bartender system database from a bartender document perspective. So if you have a bartender document in Librarian, that means that that document is in your bartender system database. And in order to have access to that document if you're not going to export it and move it over to a Windows folder before you move back into Librarian in the new one, you want to migrate that system database over. And uh, that kind of wraps up our section on assessing our commander integration. Awesome. So I do also, again, have another question. <laughs> so it's good that I could like go through and assess everything, which is awesome, especially, you know, like if I'm new to the company, making sure I have everything aligned. But, you know, how do I actually begin with creating the list? Like, where do I start? Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's go ahead and go through that. So let's go through setting everything up. So you might think it's just uh, safe to install Bartender on your old production commander server. And one thing to know is that you can actually only have one version of Bartender installed per PC. And in some use cases, you know, it's, it's completely fine to do so. Um, but when we're talking about anything that's integrating or automated and, you know, such as the topic of today's webinar, uh, we do suggest setting up or following our best practice, I should say, of setting up a new test environment. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get away from the scenario where you take down a, pr a tested production system and then replace it with an untested one. So once again, we have to remember that Bartend, each bartender integration is a little bit different in how it's used, and there's a lot of moving parts here, and it's not just bartender configuration itself. Um, we want to make sure that everything that is before and after bartender is also configured correctly when we're automating. And we essentially want to do a systems a check or validate to some degree that our dev environment is functioning as we expect it to before we take down any production system and then promote that, uh, that dev server to production. So here's what we need to start considering for our new Bartender 2019 instance. Because we are integrating, we need to make sure that we have the correct installer. So we need the architecture of the Bartender installer to match your OS. So no really, uh, you wanna stay away from installing Bartender 32-bit on a 64-bit um, architecture, or uh, OS, excuse me, when integrating. Then we wanna make sure, you know, as you're downloading this and as you're making that decision, right? Uh, you wanna make sure that you go to the Seagull Scientific website and get the latest build of the bartender. So just to make sure that you have the latest patch. As we go through the installation, we'll immediately come across a decision we need to activate. So now if you've purchased a new bartender uh, license outright, you can go ahead and just activate it on your new test or dev server. If you're upgrading from a version of Bartender that has maintenance, you'll need to make uh, sure that you're aware of a provisional activation. And we'll cover a little bit on that uh, in, in a moment here. And uh, your, or your provisional activation will allow you to have Bartender um, uh, installed, excuse me, it'll allow you to have the old version of Bartender installed and activated, as well as your new Bartender 2019 installed and activated, and they'll be allowed to coexist. And this, uh, this activation is provisional. And the way that it works is that pending your addition, you'll have 30 to 180 days to test Bartender 2019, where you can still have your old Bartender instance and the new one with the same product key code, assuming you have maintenance. And before that period is up, that 30 to 100 day period is up, you wanna deactivate one of the versions. And the concept or the idea is that you would have tested your Bartender integration by the time that period is up, and then you can deactivate the old. Now, if for whatever reason you forget, 
or for whatever reason um, you're not able to validate, what will happen after that period is that the new instance or your dev server will deactivate itself and the old bartender version will stay intact. Then moving on from activation, we wanna move on to installing our print drivers. So remember, bartender's pretty reliant upon the print drivers when we're talking about labels we effectively query the print driver, we ask it, what are you capable of? And based on that, we let you do certain things or we make assumptions on certain things like the stock and uh, label types that you're using. So we wanna make sure that we install the correct print drivers. And also we wanna keep in mind if we're gonna keep our naming convention the same, um, uh, excuse me, if we don't want to make the change in our ERP system, we want to keep the naming convention the same. So we'll want to refer back to our list and see, okay, well, what were they called on the old server? And then make this conscious decision that, okay, we're going to rename it, but we're, uh, we need to update our, our task list or we need to update our uh, trigger file coming in with the BTXML. Then we can go ahead and copy over all our commander task lists, our bartender labels, our databases, and however you want to get that over to your new server. Um, it's totally up to you. We usually just do a copy and paste uh, over the network. And uh, what we want to pay attention to is we obviously don't want to just throw these on the desktop and just start working off our desktop. So we want to pay attention to the folder structure. And depending on your scenario and your ERP scenario, you want to nest them in the correct folder structure or create the same similar folder structure um, so that things kind of just work a little bit more seamlessly. So which brings us to our next topic, which is just something that we kind of have to mention because uh, it's part of the process. So we want to anticipate changes to our ERP system or our application or our other system that we're integrating with. So we want to think through of changes that may have, uh, may have occurred. So changes moving from our 10.1 uh, or prior um, commander instance to our new bartender 2019 instance. And we want to think about, okay, what changes will, might we need to anticipate? So some examples are, uh, has the scan folder changed? Uh, are the trigger files needing to be dropped into new directories? What about the location of your bartender label, uh, labels? Are they nested in the same folder structure? Um, do your trigger files coming from your ERP need to be updated as far as maybe the printer name, the label name, once again, the folder structure? Um, Another thing as well that kind of gets overlooked is uh, how are you going to test this integration? So will you be able to run this integration with the sandbox environment variant of your ERP? So do you have the equivalent of, um, of dev and production over there as well? Uh, how will you be able to test this without affecting production? So um, you know, in most cases you have your production ERP that's still sending and processing uh, print job requests to the commander instance, that old version of bartender. So meantime, how are you going to do that? Are you going to be copying and pasting files or trigger files over manually? And you'll want to kind of get a game plan on that side of things as well. And once again, each scenario is, uh, each scenario is going to be different. And these are kind of all just questions that you have to ask yourself that will likely result in minor changes here and there needed on the ERP side of things. And uh, even though the bulk of it is going to be on the bartender integration side as you're uh, upgrading your versions and going to integration builder. And finally, with that complete and all that in mind, we can start actually working on the integration. So we'll want to open Integration Builder first. So remember, this is the tool or one of the tools that replaces Commander. At the welcome page, we either want to open an integration if we're coming from Bartender 20, uh, 2016, or if we're coming from 10.1 and prior and we're bringing in a Commander task list, we'll want to import the integration. And remember, uh, this is the one that we pulled from our old server so that it contains all our task lists and all the settings of our integrations. And once imported, we'll see Integration Builder actually open up, not just the welcome screen. And we'll want to go uh, to the integration properties. This will likely either be uh, socket or file detection when coming from Commander. If you're coming from Bartender 2016, you could have web service or database integrations as well. But the common ones coming from 10.1 or prior, like I said, is going to be uh, socket or file detections. You want to click on the integration type located under integrations. This will show you the properties of the integration on the right. If anything has changed because of the new potential location of your integration server, you'll want to change it here. So as far as directories go and all that. Um, and also, you know, if like your file pattern or anything like that has changed as well. And um, 
also something else that exists in Bartender 2019 is uh, that we now have the ability to, uh, there's new uh, detection settings. So for example, one of the common ones that we use all the time in projects is uh, how, what do you want to happen after a successful processing of a print job to a file and what do you want it to have or what do you want to happen after a failure? And uh, the second of which does not exist in Commander. So note that you may have a task list with several integrations nested within it, or, or you might just be creating several integrations. And for that, you'll see on the top left-hand corner where it says integrations, um, that you'll see multiple listed there. You'll have to go through each one of these uh, if you have multiple integrations and it applies and make sure that you check these folders and check these actions and make sure that everything is kind of set correctly. Um, the changes should be minor and the only changes, like as mentioned, should be a reflection of its new respective location of the integration. So then we move down to the actions. So as mentioned, this is a new concept when you're coming from Commander, but this is effectively what you want your integration to do once an event is detected. And many new integrations you may find out that it gets very complex, um, where you can parse data before printing set responses back to um, another web API. You can update a database uh, as you're printing or after printing, et cetera. However, the good thing is though, uh, when you're coming from Commander and you just import one of these task lists, those did not ex uh, those features did not exist back then. So it should be pretty straightforward or it should be pretty simple. And what you should see um, is one of a few things. So you should be, uh, you should see under actions, a BTXML print action, a general print action, or a print command script. And remember, that's what replaces commander script. And also remember, um, your, uh, even though it has a different nomenclature, uh, your trigger files and the syntax within them are still valid. So for the print document action, you wanna make sure that your print job is structured correctly, such as what label to print, printer and um, if those are static values and really what's going to change there is that the label name is likely not going to change but the folder that it's nested in may have changed um, also the printer name so if you kind of uh, follow the best practices uh, your printer should name should be the same however if you for whatever reason decided this would be a good opportunity to clean up your naming convention of your printers you'll want to make sure you update it there so it's um, current now for the btxml and the print command script actions, you wanna really only make sure that the source is set to variable and event data. Now event data, and you'll see it wrapped in percents, so you'll see event, uh, excuse me, percent, event data, percent, is the variable that contains the incoming data from our network socket or file or whatever is coming into our integration. So we'll wanna make sure that this is set this way so the incoming contents is what's processed as BTXML or as print command script. So that's the equivalent of telling the integration platform, hey, whatever is in that file coming in, process it as such. So we'll wanna make sure of that. And then moving on, once that's all set, we're ready to, uh, to test our integration. So remember, we're gonna be using the same tool to test the integration as well. So that's Integration Builder. So just to be safe, we'll want to hit uh, save on the top left-hand corner, and uh, I usually just you know cl click it here and there just to be safe. And we'll want to click on test uh, or the test uh, tab up on our uh, on our ribbon. So this will bring us to the page that we see on screen now, and we want to hit start or the green play button. At this point, if you do have any trigger files in that scanned directory of yours, um, they are going to process. Um, if you don't, this is where at this point you can start dropping trigger files in or sending in uh, data via a socket or whatever the integration is programmed to do. Um, as mentioned, uh, if we're coming from Commander, in most cases, it's going to be dropping a trigger file. In the message box uh, towards the middle, we'll view any errors that come up. And this is where you'll see issues like bad printer names, bad label names, um, you cannot access a specific resource. So permissions issues uh, such as um, uh, access to a network directory. And you'll wanna read through those, uh, through those error messages and react accordingly. Uh, you'll also notice that the error messages in general are much more descriptive as to what's going on in the background. And uh, they it's just a better troubleshooting tool overall. When things do go wrong, uh, it's a little bit more obvious as far as what's going on. What we're getting, or if we're just doing a, uh, your typical print uh, type integration, what we eventually want to see is that the job was successfully sent to the spooler or that it was completed successfully. 
And if you do run into issues and it's not easy, and it's not easy for your system to resend the data, uh, one of the new features is that you can always uh, select the given action in the messages dialog and right click and hit replay. Or you can click on the top uh, where it says uh, repeat last event, uh, excuse me, where it says uh, repeat last event above uh, near the ribbon uh, to the right of the start and the stop icon there. And you should see the integration uh, reprocess everything um, right away. So this is going to be, you know, if you made new change or you made any changes to your labels and you're ready for a new revision of it and it's not very easy to get your integration, or excuse me, your ERP or whatever it may be to uh, resend a trigger file of any, uh, of any sort. Uh, the next thing, and a little uh, something, uh, one of the things that we talked about towards the beginning of the webinar is uh, kind of a feature that I often use when, in certain scenarios, uh, we now have the simulated print option. So let's say you're configuring this integration and you're trying to test it and get things going, uh, but the printers are offline or the printers are not in house yet, or you just happen to be kind of like the rest of us working from home and you're just not near one of them right now. So it's not ideal for you to be physically testing as it's kind of pointless and you can't see what the printout or the physical printout actually is. So if you want to see what the printout contains, you can enable this, uh, this new feature. So to enable, you simply stop the integration for a moment, click the toggle icon where it says simulated print, then start the integration again. Now go ahead and drop a new trigger file or send in data via the socket, whatever your integration. Um, you know, if this is a newer integration, send in a new web service request, update that database, and you'll note that nothing is actually sent to the spooler. And instead, a link appears in that message dialog. Clicking that link should show you an image of what your printout would look like if it were printed out. Now, of course, this doesn't anticipate for issues like if the printer is uh, loaded incorrectly, if it's jammed, if it's going to be smudging our labels, but it lets you at least get a visual on it and see is my data accurate, is my layout correct, am I printing the right label, and are things behaving as I expect it to. Uh, so this would let you make a little bit more progress before you actually get the physical printout, and then you can just address the hardware issues um, as when you get to that point. So, at this point, we went ahead and we made sure our integration is functioning as expected. We've tested it, it's passed, and uh, we're happy with it. And now, even though Integration Builder is using all this new, uh, our new services architecture, we are running in effectively a test mode when we're in Integration Builder. So, in the sense, and what I mean by that, that if we close out Integration Builder, the integration does, uh, does stop running. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we save our integration, and the next step is to deploy the integration. So as uh, if you recall from the beginning of our webinar, you can deploy your integration locally or to another server and on a schedule if you'd like. So you can just, uh, once again, you can deploy an integration from your laptop to your server, and maybe the changes that you have applied or your new integration that you designed uh, doesn't take the effect until end of week or whatever it may be. And, uh, you want to make sure you save the integration and we'll, the uh, integration builder actually won't let you deploy it unless you save it. And this dialog will come up, the screenshot that we see in the middle, when we do and we are ready to deploy the integration. So the first step is going to be to select the target server. Select this computer if you're on the integration server itself. And then you can hit next. And then the final icon on the bottom right hand corner is going to be the schedule upon when uh, the schedule upon when uh, we want the integration to deploy. Uh, if we're ready to just go ahead and deploy now and you know run this as a service or fully as a service, so to speak, we can go ahead and hit deploy now and hit finish. If you click deploy now, you'll notice that after a moment, the administration console will open up. And here, this is uh, aside from everything else that we see on the left-hand side of the uh, admin console there, uh, this is gonna be where we manage our integrations and our specifically our live integrations. Um, and this is gonna be where you stop and start them. This is gonna be where you take down integrations if needed. Um, and also where you can drill into them and you can get a, a view of your uh, message feed. You know, so you can uh, view your print jobs here as you go through, um, or excuse me, as your integrations and the e events come through. Um, and effectively at that point, we can say that uh, we're done and we've successfully migrated our integration to Barton in 2019 and we're ready to start exploring and make it more uh, flexible and using all the new features of, of uh, Integration Builder and the Administration Console. And with that, I'll hand it over to Mike. 
Awesome. Thanks, Manny. That's a lot of great uh, information. Uh, you've sort of made a what I think is a pretty complex target, complex subject, uh, pretty straightforward. And I think as Stacy mentioned, um, this webinar is being recorded and uh, you all will have access to uh, the recorded version. So you can sort of go back and uh, refer back to all the great information uh, that Manny uh, has prepared and presented here. Um, next slide. So to uh, sort of bring our webinar to an end today. Um, I wanted to just, uh, again, sort of quickly uh, recap sort of the reasons why you should update the Bartender 2019, and then uh, cover the next steps that you can take. Um, of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, in terms of Bartender 10.1, we are ending support for it, technical support for it by the end of the year, December 31st. You'll no longer be able to receive technical support. As you're also aware of, uh, Bartender 10.1 is only supported on older versions of Windows 10 is, and is also could be a major security risk on your network. Uh, but of course, as uh, we've covered here and as primarily as Manny has covered here, the reason you'll want to upgrade to Bartender 20, 2019 is all the great new capabilities and features. Uh, Manny went through the new integration platform and architecture with Bartender 2019. Uh, the fact that it is much, much more powerful than Commander. Uh, Bartender 2019's integration platform covers a wide variety of integration methods, actions, as well as common data types, as Manny sort of went through. Um, in terms of Bartender 2019, uh, it's also much uh, easier in terms of designing and managing your labels uh, with uh, intelligent templates capability. Uh, you're also getting uh, many new database connection options uh, in Bartender 2019, including the Azure SQL, XML files, MySQL, as well as the uh, ability to create your own database within Bartender itself. Uh, we uh, support creating PDFs without any third-party driver. We've made designing data entry forms in Bartender much easier and more intuitive, including uh, supporting easier a database record and printer selection directly to the forms themselves. And we've also uh, have new improved uh, print portal to support browser-based and smartphone-based uh, access to printing. And finally, the new administration console, which replaces Security Center, provides a lot of consolidated functionality for user security, printer management, license management, and much, much more. Uh, so overall, Bartender 2019 uh, should allow you to automate and manage your entire labeling system much easier, uh, along with its uh, ability to support a lot of new powerful capabilities, as well as hopefully what you get a taste of is sort of the flexibility in terms of being able to take Bartender, your labeling system, and integrate it into your business as well, connecting to databases and other business systems. Uh, next slide, please. So what are the next steps to take? Uh, we, re we recommend contacting us or your local partner reseller to see how you can update to Bartender 2019. If you need to renew your maintenance and support, you can also contact us or your local partner reseller. Uh, make sure to ask about our business stability and customer loyalty for promotions that are going on right now. There's an opportunity to uh, bring your maintenance and support contracts uh, and make them current at uh, uh, some attractive rates. Uh, you can also access the customer portal uh, on our website to actually generate an estimate or quote for your maintenance and support renewal. Um, if you need extra technical assistance or help, our professional service team is also available, Manny Castro being a prime member on that team. Uh, of course, many of our partner resellers also have technical staff uh, available to help with the update. And a uh, couple other things is you can always visit the Bartender Community website. You see sort of the link up here. Uh, we have a dedicated uh, support page and section uh, on our support site for updating from 10.1 to Bartender 2019, including tips, videos, including sort of an archived version of this video will be up there as well. 
uh, documentation and other technical documents. And finally, if you like this webinar um, or the one we did last month, this is sort of our 10.1 update series of webinars, you can um, sign up for future webinars. I, we have a plan to sort of do one a month between now and the end of the year. Uh, and you can go to uh, seagullscientific.com, go to uh, the About menu option and click on Webinars to see the entire webinar series, uh, gain access uh, directly to sort of recorded versions of previous webinars, and then also sign up for future webinars. So next slide. So at this point, I'd like to thank, every, thank everyone again for attending uh, and taking the time. And I think with the time remaining in the next five or 10 minutes, we'll take uh, um, some questions at this point. Hey everyone, so we're gonna start with our Q&A. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and submit your questions. And if we don't answer them in the Q&A here, we'll go ahead and follow up with you uh, later on today. So our first question, if you are not already on version 10.1, do you need to upgrade to this release before upgrading to Bartender 2019? Uh, no, you do not. So pretty much everything that we covered today uh, really applies to any older version of Bartender uh, that may be running a commander integration. Uh, those task lists are backwards compatible, your labels are backwards compatible, um, and you kind of just want to follow the same steps and anywhere that you see 10.1 you can replace 9.4 or 9.3, etc. And the same should apply. Awesome. Um, and then a follow-up, can I still use VB scripts on my labels? Yes, you can. And actually your existing VB scripts should still work um, as you initially designed them. Um, so it's pretty common for whoever wrote that script to, to no longer be in the same role or, um, you know, we just don't know who wrote that script anymore. We don't know exactly what it does. We just know that it does the job for us, um, that whatever that calculation is. Um, that being said, uh, go through your testing process, but they should work, they're backwards compatible, and also you can write additional or new VB scripts if needed. That's still a feature, uh, and that's nested within the label design itself. And then, is it possible to export this simulated print into a PDF? Um, I don't believe there's an option to do that in the UI. Um, I guess you could still just take a screenshot of it. Uh, it's still available and comes up. Um, I'll double check on that, but I don't believe so, and I'll follow up directly. Awesome. Um, and then here's another question. With the update, will there be an easy way to update the database for each field per label, or will it work as it does today? That really depends on what you mean by that. Um, if you're connecting to a new database altogether, uh, with new fields altogether, um, it's probably going to be the same process that you're anticipating. Uh, however, going forward, once you do introduce 2019, there are going to be some features that you can leverage, like the name database connections, where you can save um, commonly used database connections and reuse them across all your labels, uh, so you don't have to go through that exercise of entering all those, uh, entering all that data every time. Um, as far as on a field by field basis, if the field names have changed, um, there is not really a great way to, I mean, uh, how would you auto define or how would you know what A equals to B, et cetera. Um, so you still have to make sure that the right field is mapped to the right, or the right data source is mapped to the right field. Awesome. And it looks like we have time for a couple more questions. Um, we have one here. Um, what does Bartender write back to databases like SQL in the connection or connections? Um, 
whatever you'd like it to do. Uh, so the way that it works is uh, there's this concept of variables as well in the integration platform. And now one of the variables that we talked about is the event data variable. So that's the incoming uh, data. Uh, so that's one variable you can write back. Uh, you can also parse that out into a record set and on a field by field basis, write back to another database. You can grab things from the environment, like the time this was executed, the server that is running the integration. Um, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be data that printed on the label. Um, so there's a large library of variables, plus all the data that you're giving us when you pass data to the integration platform, and you can discriminate and pick what you want written back to the database and what you don't. Awesome, okay. So um, it looks like some of the other questions we have, we're gonna need to follow up with those uh, via email. Um, but I do want to say thank you to everyone for attending. Um, that's the end of our Q&A. Um, we appreciate it so much. And again, like Mike said, go ahead and sign up for uh, the next webinars uh, in our series. And the next one coming up is airing on September 20th. So be sure to register and share with folks. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thank you. Bye, everyone.